Week 69 of reselling and last week I chatted about how I've hit a bit of a flat line in terms of movement. Things haven't really been spiking up or haven't really changed over the last couple of months. Well today I want to readdress that. Over the last 69 weeks I've been selling on eBay to essentially make a living, to invest and to save. And you can do this too but over that period I've seen that you'll have low weeks, you'll have high weeks and you'll have periods of consistency which isn't a bad thing. And I think the key here is actually if you can get that higher consistency that's that's where the money's at but I want to dive into this but also address you know the progress updates for week 69 so let's dive into it but I'm actually spicing it up this week instead of doing the top five items sold I actually want to break it down into the three top items sold one flop and something odd or I guess like the good the bad the ugly anyway something different and I figured I may show you the highs the lows and everything in between so this way you'll learn a thing or two along the way too so top item number one for this week was this Disney's Tarzan Nintendo 64 game now this is actually a bolo if you can find this game especially if it's boxed it will get a lot of money now I paid $12.50 for this one out of a bundle from an op shop that I got um, and I've kept the Nintendo and just selling the games to to make some dollars from it but I sold this one for $70 they also paid some postage for Express after all fees and postage I have come out with $49.04 profit top honor number two was this uh, Eve book this is actually from the video game Eve if you haven't checked out Eve the online game that's it's pretty cool whole big lore and big fan base anyway very interesting I purchased this one ages ago like I'm talking a long time ago for three dollars and seventy two cents and uh, essentially I've been out of this for forty five dollars now here's the kicker it's actually going to Canada and they've paid up sixty two dollars in postage so there will be some additional discounts there for myself which has enabled me to get a profit of around forty eight dollars and sixty three cents so not too bad on this one then top item number three for this week uh, was some books that I actually picked up with um, Christian when we went to Savers the other week if you haven't checked out that video please go check it out but I picked this one up um, average cost of good worked out to be about two dollars and fifty five cents I've sold it for forty nine dollars and ninety seven cents profiting $32.39, so pretty happy with this one too. Now, in terms of a flop item, this one was a flop only because I made a boo-boo with the postage. Now, it was a pretty good purchase, it was a pretty good sale. I've purchased this on an average per item, you know, that works out to be about, um, I think it was a dollar something or two bucks. Anyway, basically it cost me $53.55 for all these 21 books. Um, I've sold them for $102, which isn't too bad, but they didn't fit in the size of box that I thought was gonna cost me around $19 postage and it worked out the postage was around $35. Now I probably could have done some shuffling about and whatnot, but I figured there's no point because even if I'm only gonna get an extra five, six dollars, it's not really gonna get the profit much higher. So profit on this one was only $3.57. So something I need to just be mindful of making sure I do put in the postage on these bigger bulkier items of bulk books, or I could have done pickup. But the other thing here is I also realized that, well, actually by selling this, I've got all the money back from that haul. So actually now anything else I sell is gravy anyway. So it worked out in the end, but just something to be mindful of that when you are selling things, make sure you do take into consideration postage, especially for things that you haven't sold in terms of volume or size before. And the odd item for this week, something just, just cool that I have been able to sell was this uh, vintage Magnum cigar box. Now, originally this was free, but I used it as an average cost of good um, in my haul from an op shop just recently. Uh, they actually gave it to me for free. Uh, so it basically averaged out to be about $4.42 on this lot. Uh, sold this for $30. It only sat around for about four days um, and profited $10.58. So if it was in better condition, probably could have got that $50, $60 amount, but this one went pretty quick, so happy regardless. But yeah, that's the, the odd item for the week. So how did we actually progress for this week? Well, the week has actually been below average. We've done 35 sales, ASP sitting at $28.90. Margin 56%, so I would like to be up to that higher end of 68%. Cost of goods, $132.39 revenue. We're still hitting over that $1,000 in profit, just shy of 600 bucks. So, I mean, it's all in all, it's not a bad, bad week, but it's not definitely not my best week, that's for sure. Um, average cycle time came in around 57 days, and here's all the items that have been selling. Majority of the revenue coming in from books, DVDs, video games, and clothes. But I also want to explain that, you know, it has been a bit of a roller coaster of a week. Like if, if you have a look at this, you can see that we, we started off pretty solid. And then I don't know what happened on Tuesday, but Tuesday just died. And then we've had a pretty consistent week of a lower amount of sales. Usually I'm doing closer to 200 and these were a bit mid 100s and then not sure what happened on Saturday also dropped down. And then Sunday yesterday, been able to 
quickly crawl back up. So just getting over the line. Now I will be 100% honest, some of these numbers include items that have not been paid for. So <laughs> that still might mean that I don't get all the dollars that I'm looking for. And in terms of perspective, another thing that people should realize is, you know, in terms of my 69 weeks, this week is actually coming in at week 40 in terms of a ranking. So, you know, it's not necessarily the worst week, but it's getting down there in terms of the volume of better weeks that I've had. So if anything, it, it's not the end of the world, but definitely not where I want to be in terms of profit wise. Revenue wise, it was still pretty consistent. So from this, I wanted to then dive into the lessons and actually talk about some of the highs and lows, right? So obviously at the moment, and, and in last week's video, I focused on, you know, the month progress and some of those updates over the last couple of months, but sales are down. And I think there's something that we need to always take into consideration when sales are down. And the lesson here is that there's usually some reasons for it. And we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. The other thing is, I'm kind of going through a bit of the grind of not seeing what I want. Now, I've got goals this, this year. I want to hit certain targets. I want to be at certain points. Um, and I'm behind those targets, behind those goals. But at the same time, I'm actually doing pretty, pretty well, all things considered. So, you know, sometimes that mental perspective can get in the way of us actually just doing our jobs and in, in, in actually making some money. Um, so that's something to consider. And the other thing is there are always factors that are at play at highs and lows, which is kind of comes down to the sales a down perspective. And this is what I want to dive into. If we actually look at my highs and understand what was happening. So you can see here on screen, you know, where I've had some high months or some high weeks. You know, the difference here is like I had different kind of stock. I had consistent stock. I had backlogs of stock and I had some video game hauls and I had some cheaper margins in, in terms of cheaper uh, buy-ins, which meant I was able to sell high with a higher ASP, have better margins and get better profit. Um, and I had a lot of quantity of it, which is obviously a big win. And that's what led to these high weeks or these high months. And that's not always going to happen. But now if I actually have a look at the lows, what's actually happening in these low perspectives here, maybe I wasn't being consistent. This is more so at the start. I've been learning the ropes. Uh, there was external factors at play, but also, you know, maybe it comes down to source and quality or quantity, you know, things that I wasn't able to get compared to those highs. But then if you look at the consistency over the last couple of months, you can actually see it. Well, I haven't actually really changed anything other than sourcing, you know, locally, maybe trying to get a few bundles here and there, but also making sure that I am being consistent. And you can see I have been very, very consistent. And this is the same for you. Maybe that's something you need to consider. But when we actually then dive in and actually look at this consistency and a bit more deeper in terms of the positioning, what is actually going on here? Well, there's two things that we need to always, always factor in, and it's external factors versus the things that we can control. And external factors at this point in time, there is, I've been reading a lot of comments, seeing a lot of people saying different things. Some people are really doing well and some people are <laughs> struggling to, you know, not do as good as they would like. And there's probably a few factors that you all need to consider. There's rising inflation, there's increased interest rates, there's pressure at homes, thus the uncertainty, meaning pressure on people's home loans and having to pay more bills and things like that. There's a currently a government election and there's people basically not looking to spend their money when all these things are going on. Not saying that people won't, I'm just saying there's factors here that are probably out of our control. Now, the things that we can control and things that you need to be asking yourself is your sourcing. I am sourcing, but can I be sourcing better? How can I be sourcing differently? What are the quality of my goods that I'm selling? I can choose these quality of my goods. So that's something that you can control too. Can you be looking from alternative leads or be looking for alternative leads? Can you be sourcing in different ways, in new ways? The other thing is listings and consistency. You are in control of this. So how many are you doing per day? Are they new or are they read lists? And I've been doing a lot of read lists of lately because I don't have a volume of stock that I want to be selling. Uh, so these are all things that you need to be considering. But when you put all this together, when actually you look at it, the grand scheme of things, it ain't all that bad. It ain't all that bad. And if we have a look at the progress views, you can see here that yes, I'm down um, this week and I was down basically the similar to this about six weeks ago. And in between that, I had an 1800 week, a 1500 week, a 1400 week, and then I've had a couple of thousand dollar weeks as well. So once again, perspective helps us see that you know things, things aren't always as they seem, or maybe we need to understand what is actually going on. I think the real big kicker here is, you know, even though that I've had a less sales week, um, I'm still consistent. I'm still getting some pretty good volume. And I think the best thing that I can do is stick to my guns, make sure I am being consistent, 
do some sanity checks as well, make sure things are all you know ticking in the right direction and charge on and see what I can manage and only focus on what I can manage and not what I can't control. So where do we go from here? What do we do? How can you do the same in terms of actually increasing sales or ensuring that you're gonna have that consistency? Well, follow your numbers. What is selling and what can you continue to sell? Now for me, I love books and I sell a lot of books. They're my main cup of tea. If you wanna know more about that, you can check out this video. However, each of my week and the majority of my weeks, they are the top number one in my revenue. However, I did a little deep dive into some of my stats and actually found some very interesting information. This has come from my own dashboard and my own system that I use to track all my sales. But essentially, this is what I found. So on average, when I sell a pair of jeans, for me, they sell within 18 days with an average ASP or an average sale price of $39 with a 69% margin and a sell through rate kid you not, of 87.5%, meaning from the amount that I've purchased, I've sold 87.5% of them. Now, in comparison, books where I seem to put majority of my time, I'm not saying I'm changing this, but this is just interesting. Books on average, they sell on an average of 51 days. Every 51 days, that's when I sell the books and they have an average sale price of $31 and a margin of 54% with a sell through rate of 43%. Once again, meaning the total amount of books that I've actually purchased, I've sold 43% of them to this day. So this tells me some very interesting information and something that we can take action on, something that I can take action on. Of, co of course, there's a whole bunch of different factors to consider, you know, the types of branding. Can I actually get that many? Can I get more? It's the same with books. It's the types of authors, the quality, the bundles of books and things like that. But if anything, if you're looking at this, it tells you that the jeans would be a better way to actually sell and to make more money. doesn't mean that it's just going to work perfectly overnight because it doesn't mean I can just walk down the street and just pick up all these jeans either, but just something to consider. So follow the numbers, stick with what you know, but also be willing to learn, adapt and pivot and change. And as I said, this has come from my reseller dashboard. If you want to check out some of that, you can jump down below. I've got some details there. You can go check it out. I'm going to jump into some show and tell, just some different things that I've been selling this week. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. All right, team, a couple of things going out. Um, what's today? Tuesday. So this is for the Wednesday mail run. Not much, but a few little things. We've got some couple of mini figs going out. This went for 35. This guy went for 30 bucks. Um, Lego classic, so a few Lego things. Silence of the Lambs still sealed. That went for 25 or 30, I think it was. Uh, complete back black book. Second time I've sold this. This one went for 35. The person's returned it for whatever reason and um, it's unopened and um, sold it the first time for 20 bucks and this time sold it for uh, 35. So, not complaining. Uh, big bundle of Rebecca tote books. There's more in here. That went for 109, I think it was. This guy's just gone for 20 and uh, another $9 DVD or something. Um, I think I've got one more DVD that I've got to get out, but it's been pretty light, but hey, charge on. All right, team, it is Friday morning and just uh, packing up some of the mail. It's a bit of a bread and butter light to week this week, but we've got some, um, this isn't Skylanders, this is uh, Infinity, Disney Infinity going out. We've got DVD War and Peace, that went for 30. This guy went for 16. Got some Pokemon cards going out, that one went for 29. Got Michael DVD going out, I think that was 15. Mr. Man Annual's gone out for 25. Assassin's Creed's gone out for about a quick 20, so nothing too over the top, but hey, still pays the bills. All right, so where do we go from here? My encouragement to you is this. If you are feeling flat, ask yourself these three questions. Are you doing everything you can in your control? Secondly, what's driving the lower results, which isn't in your control? Then don't worry about it, right? You can remove that. You don't have to worry about it. You need to focus on what you can control. And thirdly, what is in your control and what are you gonna do about it? Basically, these questions are all the same. Are you doing everything you can? If it's something that you can't control, well, forget about it. And thirdly, what can you control and what can you do about it? So let's charge on, let's see what we can do. And if you wanna check out some of my other videos, I've got a big range of different things. Go check them out. Really do appreciate you. You have a wonderful day. Cheers.